We want to see you all over on YouTube, so check us out at Backyard Gardens TV to watch our podcasts and other gardening videos. A huge part of After the Harvest is the act of harvesting, and there's different times to harvest and different ways to do it. And today, we're going to break all that down for you right here on the Backyard Gardens Podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens Podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We're your hosts, Ben and Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, where we learn to grow and grow for change. All right, everybody, if you want to support the show or you'd like to have input in some of our show topics or listen to two extra episodes a month, check us out on Patreon. Link is below. And then also what you can do is you can head over to YouTube and check out Backyard Gardens TV. It will help support the show. Give us a like and a subscribe and um, go deep down the rabbit hole because we're here for you. But uh, harvesting... <laughs> is there any greater act of gardening than the actual act of harvesting? I stand by when a seedling first emerges from the soil in your garden is a close second. Yeah, that's no, not for me. Not for me. It is poetic, but not for me. (laughs) (laughs) It's all about that basket. You know what I mean? Filling that basket, (laughs) getting it in the gut. So, um, yeah. But there's all kinds of different ways to harvest. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. So, and I mean, I'm not talking about, okay, you can either pick it, you can pluck it, or you can snip it. That's not what I'm talking about. So. Well, no, I mean, it, it connects because we intentionally, when we talked about after the harvest dash planning last week, we didn't cover the act of harvesting. You know, this is a part of the design of this series. Now we're at the point of, and in hindsight, there is some bit of that we have to plan for as well. And so I'm sure we'll dig into that today. Um, The after the harvest, like once you've harvested the food, like you're not done. And I think that that's like, you know, at some point we want to like kind of complete the cycle here. But the reality is that no, there's still more to be done, more to be had. Yeah, there definitely (laughs) is. More steps to take. There definitely is. And It's, you know, I did a video last year about the three different times that I harvest my tomatoes which kind of spurred this along in my mind because, you know, you can enjoy different vegetables at different times and different parts of it. And Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, walking into the garden, having an actual plan for it, you know, if we stick, if we kind of go back to the last episode where we were planning, Mm -hmm. just when to harvest some vegetables will help you in that planning. You know what I mean? Having that idea in your head. So, for instance, this year, we have a tomato plant that we're basically only going to harvest green tomatoes off of so we can have fried green tomatoes because we thoroughly enjoy those. That's a part of my plan as well. I don't know which came first, the uh, the horse or... My plan came first. I win. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) Um, I think I, well, it's, it's beside the it point. Is. So I have a red tomato, um, a, a boxcar willy that's planted. That's the name a of the tomato? The cage. That's hmm? the name of the tomato, boxcar willy? That, isn't it the coolest? That's absolutely the name of the uh, uh, That tomato. is the coolest name for and tomato ever. I actually bought the transplant last year when I walked past it and I said, oh, because my tomatoes were off to a slow start last year. And then when I checked the tag, I'm like, oh, you ha- you're coming home with me. And it did really well in the garden. So anywho, I bought some seeds and I have two in the cage, baby, that are meant to get to their full potential. But I had some space and I planted one out in the open, in the wild, in the front yard garden. And my intention is to, I have a list of a couple of people that I plan on gifting green tomatoes as well. And I feel like that's a great use of that space. And then I don't have to be so stressed about, is is a squirrel going to eat the tomato as soon as it gets ripe? So I'm just going to hopefully pull off green tomatoes from that plant. Um, 
which it, again it's not necessarily i mean maybe a bunch of people do this that's not necessarily traditional but i have come up with a plan for that harvest yeah right you know um and that's probably the easiest because you don't, I mean, that's all I'm going to do. You know? And if I let a couple of get away from me, you know, they get a little bit pink, then guess what? I'm going to have a pinkish tomato that comes off the yeah. vine. I mean, it is what it is. This, and that's not the end of the world. Mm-mm. You know what I'm So boohoo, you get a fresh tomato. <laughs> You know, in all seriousness, though, though, I'm always so stingy with my green tomatoes because I I'm never sure how many actual uh, ripe tomatoes I'm going to get. So I'm kind of like, well, let me see. You know? Yeah. <laughs> let me see. Yeah. But see, that's you also know? part of it, too. If you really enjoy a green tomato, then planting more so you can ensure that you get that as part of that plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if throughout the series, I feel like we're going to keep referring to the plan a lot. It seems like. Well, yeah, I mean, well, also know this, I believe, so we talked about planning last week, I believe you can come up with a plan while things are kind of in motion. So obviously you can change whatever that plan was, or in some cases, maybe you didn't get around to planning kind of what the harvest would be like, and you know, or what you do with that harvest for a certain vegetable. Like I have some zucchini that I'm just going to be hopeful and say, it's going to kick butt this year, Right. Just based on the triple I've had with that, I really don't have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm gonna, there's also that balance of I don't want to put too much energy into it if it doesn't do well. And so I'm going to figure it out once I get to how many zucchini I'm pulling off of the plant. And that's OK, too. You know, I mean, you, we're talking about zucchinis. You mean like the ones of mine that are just riddled with squash vine borers as we speak? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I feel like I feel like Instead of like bleeping, you know, an F bomb, I felt like we should bleep um, squash vine board. Yeah, we were recently just... uh, pressured to put an explicit warning on the show for the, every once in a while we drop a bomb. And um, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's the F word that's the cuss word here, it's the squash mm-hmm. vine board that's the cuss word. And I have a it, feeling it, it exhausts me hearing yeah. it. Like even hearing you say it exhausts me. Like, and I feel like a lot of our listeners would be like, "Yeah, you're right. Like I can stand an <laughs> F word or you know something, yeah. but that that other one, that other series of words, no." Yeah. So <clears throat> it's an epidemic. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's terrible. But um, you know, and and it's funny you bring because as I'm sitting here, you know, every time we do this these shows, we talk. And I'm always like thinking ahead and like trying to figure out what will fit into different parts because I I sit down and I have a plan, but then that plan will change. And as you bring up zucchini, it's another one that we can talk about, about harvesting at different times, you know what I mean? In different Mm -hmm, ways. mm -hmm. So it's interesting the way that they kind of, it all unfolds as we speak because it's not something I think, and I know it took me a long time to figure out, like, I can I can harvest the, fr- the vegetable, I was going to say the fruit, but whatever you want to call it, at different times to get different results, you know, culinary results. Look at that. You like that big word, mm-hmm. didn't you? Culinary <laughs> results for my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um yeah i think though that's it's a part of keeping it interesting yeah right you know so there's some i used to work with a guy that this is like and maybe maybe in the early 2000s and this is when you know you were in not like full tuxedo but you were in business wear when you went to the office and he would sometimes come in on a saturday and if he came in on a saturday he would dress just like it was monday you know through friday and there was something that he said, like he he needed that routine. He needed to like know when he's going to work, this is what it is. And basically when he gets home and puts on his khaki shorts, you know, then it's something else. Right. And so some people need kind of that structure. Some people need to know I'm going to plant my tomatoes. I'm going to plant my eggplants. I'm going to plant whatever, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like that with my collard greens. I'm going to plant these things and I have I'm a one track mind when it comes to it. But in some cases, it runs its course. What was that you guys were eating? Was it turnips? 
where you were just like, I'm so tired of eating it. Right. Yeah. You know, and my guess is that you probably tried to switch it up, but and there's not a whole lot of ways that some of these things are really great, you know? So trying them at, you know, harvesting them at different points, eating them at different points, you know, if your garden and that plant has been good to you, you have enough to play around with, you know, right. <clears throat> and believe you me, now is the time to be playing around with it. You know? <laughs> so first of all, um, I want to go on the record and say, I'm, I feel sorry for that gentleman that has to dress that way on Saturday and then goes home and puts his khaki shorts on my heart literally bleeds for you i'm sorry sir um i'm pretty sure that i was like happened to be downtown you know stopped it at a bar then stopped it at the office and saw him and said wait what's happening here you know so i felt sorry for him too then yeah because and still do and you mentioned the word tuxedo (laughs) i would never Mm -hmm. ever wear a tuxedo ever there's no way i will never wear one i just seems so uncomfortable (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh for me and my family dressing up as a hawaiian shirt if you ever see me wearing a hawaiian shirt i'm going somewhere nice <laughs> i had um a conference earlier this uh, right at the start of the summer and um travel used to be a normal thing for us but you know these last few years have been different and so this has been my first work conference in a couple of years and my boss was like you know because he's been to a, a few of them because things have opened back up and he said um just kind of went over yeah like it's pretty casual right you know like i'm like well i really haven't dressed to the nine since like I mean, I don't know. Like, Hep was a pup. Uh, it's been a while, so that's okay. Um, but I'd love to see you in a tuxedo. All right, let's move on. We're getting way we off track. We are getting here. way off track. So let's do this. Let's take our break. And mm-hmm. while we're on our break, let's think about some vegetables that we can harvest that, that can fit into this. And um, we'll be right back. And we are going to continue this riveting conversation about harvesting. I want to harvest in a nice dress. I want to see if I can pull that off. Go on. Tuxedos for me. We'll be back. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck. All right. Harvesting. When and different techniques is the the little itty bitty teeny weeny note that I have written down. So, um, you you threw me off when you, Batavia, just so you know, but... That's okay. Sometimes when we're doing these shows, Batavia will send me a chat and I think she honestly tries to throw me off in my in my line of thought. But this chat could have said that peanut butter is sitting at the bottom of my stomach. And so I can, I can imagine how that's distracting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because it. Well, OK, I'm growing peanuts, as we all know. And one of the things that my son says, are we going to have peanut butter? I'm like, well, son, it takes a lot of peanut butter to make peanuts <laughs> or a lot of peanuts to make peanut butter. But I've realized over time that because I'm, I'm a peanut butter addict um, uh-huh. and I've said that on the backyard kitchen, which if you haven't seen season one, you should check it out. But I've realized that it sits in the bottom of my stomach and it legit makes me sleepy. So, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I digress. So techniques. Yeah. Wind of harvest. That's always like, that's a big question we get from new gardeners. And I think it's something that not only new gardeners, but even experienced gardeners can work Mm -hmm. on the timing of their harvesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've said like in that video I referred to before, like if I go to tomatoes real quick and again, we're not going to hang out on those for too long, but I harvest green tomatoes if I'm going to give away tomatoes, I harvest them when they're, you know, yellowish. You know, they're not totally right because the person coming to get them might not eat them right away. And then we'll <laughs> harvest them when they're ripe. And then we'll harvest them when they're overripe so we can save the seeds from them. So we have four different ways. And in the video, I only put three, but we have four different ways that we harvest our tomatoes in different times. So just using that thought process can kind of set you on that path of you know different ways um can you think of another vegetable that you kind of harvest in different times 
I think that there is absolutely for leafy greens of any sort. Yeah. Right. You know, so you love baby greens. I know you do. You're working on a T-shirt for for the Backyard Gardens swag and and collection for baby greens. Um, Yeah, that's not true, folks. Uh, But if I make one, it will be very sarcastic, just so you know. Yeah. (laughs) Baby greens or younger leaves, right? You know, versus something that really is probably the largest size it's going to get. Right. Right. You know, and so um, all things considered, if the weather is stable, let's say those things are. I just uh, do you do you not have a shirt on? Yeah, I don't have a shirt. I just got back surfing. Did you, did you never have a shirt on in this episode? No, I literally just walked in the door from surfing. So, okay. All right. I'm still wet um, and dripping. Yeah, that's too much information um and it's crazy because it took me 30 minutes to realize this yes, but anywho <laughs> so if you have um the leaves that are a, a plant that is consistent with weather my guess is that it's probably going to taste the same generally speaking older kind of collards older mustards older spinach versus younger leaves i think there may be a, a small difference in taste um so i said all of that to say well yeah those things definitely taste different you know like the the baby carrots versus the you know something that's been kissed by frost. get out of my head you get know? out of my head uh-huh, uh-huh. get out of my head yeah baby carrots Carrots. I mean, what is a baby carrot? It's a juvenile carrot. No, you can you can get carrot a variety of carrots that will grow mm-hmm. smaller. Mm-hmm. But we've we've harvested our carrots small before and eaten them as baby carrots, and they are definitely yeah. a little bit sweeter. You know, if you let them get overripe, there, mm-hmm. there's that issue as well. Um, but yeah, like baby greens is a good one because a lot of people really enjoy. Them. I just I don't care about them, mm-hmm. so there's that, and. I think, and the other part of it too is if you're ramping up your season and you're growing greens, harvesting them early will keep that plant growing more and more. So you've got a multi function there. Excuse me, beans, beans as well, beans, you yeah. know, depending on what time of season it is. If you're growing peas, you know, that's a great example of it. And, and I can appreciate some companies, some seed companies actually put those notes on the package. Right. Not not a lot and not definitely not all, but they actually put those notes on the package, you know, harvest early to continue to allow the plant to produce, to encourage the plant to produce. Um, Cucumbers are absolutely a good example of something that um, changes the flavor profile changes for the worse. Yeah, it definitely does. As the vegetable gets older, not necessarily as the plant gets older, but as the vegetable gets older. Um, So those are the things that you're harvesting. I mean, we we already know the story on okra. I mean, we could go on and on. We've talked about turnips, too, in this episode, and they're a good one because you can harvest the green or you can harvest the root. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people, they don't even know that they've never even eaten the root. They've only eaten the greens. So many people. Yeah, there's a lot of people like that. And the thing is, is... At that point, you're missing a totally different way to use that vegetable. You know, it's it's crazy. But my gut tells me, though, those the greens taste different if you let them grow long enough for the root to develop. Yeah, they get kind of funky. Yeah, so... uh, I don't know if I had to say funky. Tough but, is um, what I was looking for. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My neighbor, um, she's grown the last couple of years, not this year, but the last couple of years. And she really harvests, harvests them when they're small, the turnip leaves, yeah. right? The greens. Um, and we're, I mean, you're talking not baby leaves, but not much bigger, right? Versus when I've um, picked, harvested turnip bottoms, those leaves are pretty big. Yeah, they are. You know? And if you think about, um, when to harvest a lot of fruits. First of all, you should listen to the You Should Grow series that we have because we tell you on each one of those when to harvest them. But mm-hmm. think about what it's like when you go to the grocery store and you see them. Like That's the first place I would think about because that's what we all kind of, you, you know, that's what we all know of a, what a vegetable looks like. When you go into mm-hmm. a gardening situation... You know, like eggplants is one that pops out in my mind is like, when should I, when should I harvest an eggplant? Well, from the time they start to grow, you know, they get a any kind of size to them. They look like they're harvestable. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. and then when you go, to, but when you go to the grocery store, you look at it and you're like, okay, this is what an eggplant looks like. Now, different varieties take different shapes and sizes, but a lot of times it's the tenderness of that vegetable that will tell you when. So some things you can use. And I mean, I can't, I don't really want to go down the rabbit hole of like each individual vegetable, but a lot of them, it's like when you peer, when you push it with your fingernail and it leaves an Mm -hmm. indentation, it's time to harvest it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's a good way to look at it too. And like tomatoes, I mean, it's the same thing. It's the firmness of it. You know, you use the color and the firmness. I think tomatoes and peppers are great examples of um, of things you can harvest at a super early state or stage and then still be enjoyable, right? You know, because these are, are vegetables or fruits, you know, that continue to ripen, right? And you have a bunch of different options as the, the um, fruit mature even off the plant. You know, there are definitely some things that just don't work that way, you know, like melons, you right. know, um, or, Berries. you know, as far as I know, squash, right? You know, yeah, good example of, of uh, I'm going to go and tell you um, right now, if you pull a blueberry, a raspberry or a blackberry off the plant before it's ripe, it will not ripen and it will be sour, mm, sour. Maybe that's the reason why they last like, Two you know, seconds. from the grocery store to <laughs> to the trip home. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, we don't even buy raspberries anymore because they just go bad mm-hmm. so fast. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where if we go back to making a plan and I'm, I'm trying to think of in my garden, you know, minus tomatoes, like what am I growing right now that I can harvest at different times in order to get different results. And one of them, like I'm growing beets right now, so I can harvest the root. I can harvest the green. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got two different ways there. Um, Can you think of anything in your garden off the top of your head? That I could harvest like for a multi-purpose? Yeah. Um, So I want to separate this into things that will continue to produce. So a plant that will continue to produce. Yeah. Versus your one stop shop. Yeah. Right. You know, so cabbage is the one stop shop. Any of the other things we've named that will continue to produce that, you know, the plant stays in the ground. Um, so I don't I don't know that I could think of anything um, that I could absolutely manage in different ways. Um you already named beets, right? No, I don't. I don't have anything else. I'm done. Well, like if, if we go back to earlier this year, um, and I've dubbed this, I've given this vegetable a new name in my garden. It's the asshole of the garden. Um, we're going to talk about <laughs> broccoli for a second. So, <clears throat> and I, I haven't going to come up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. I was going to bring it up, but it's a positive experience. And clearly you don't like those when it comes to broccoli. Well, no, this is actually going to be positive, I think. So one thing is we've discussed and we've learned that broccoli used to be grown to eat the stalks. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. It's, the, eating the florets is, let's just call it a new age thing, for lack of a better term or ignorance on my part, whichever one you want to do. But <laughs> when it starts to bolt, and I haven't tested this, do you think that maybe the stock is still good to eat? So great question. And you know what people on the internet love to tell you? What? You can eat that you can eat a part of the plant that isn't traditionally eaten, you know? So I can't tell you how many people, like, I feel I read it with a hiss. Like, you know, you can eat the cauliflower yeah. leaves, right? You know, the favorite, we haven't gotten there yet, but we're getting close. The favorite is sweet potato leaves. You know, you can eat, you know. Do you and, know how much I, I hate could, it when people tell me that? I can be rude on here, but I'm, I try to be polite in the comments because at some point I didn't know that, right? And at some point I did learn that and it may have been from someone. Um, but this is the key when it comes to the cauliflower, uh, the cabbage, the any of those that you primarily now grow it for, like, you know, the head. It all depends on the timing of that because I had some, I have even a video, like a little reel on um, Instagram where I have cabbage, no, no, it's uh, broccoli and cauliflower leaves. And you want to talk about something that cooked for hours. I'm talking, you know how I cook my collard greens, right? You know, it's like, go ahead, put them on at night, wake up in the morning, yeah. you're still cooking. It's a little bit of an exaggeration. You know? Not really but though, they, not really. Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, pretty close to it. Um, <laughs> Especially after you fall so asleep this, on the couch while they're cooking. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so I took the same <laughs> same but well listen I'm just saying oh, I turned those on early in the morning uh, so I took the same approach cooked them in the same kind of southern style way and those things were still pretty chewy by the time I got done and at some point I'm just like well this is what it is you know and so I say that to say it all depends on how you like that kind of food um, you're never I believe going to get a cab or a um, cauliflower plant or a broccoli plant that has either formed a head or bolted and those leaves will be as tender as leaves that are designed for harvest yeah do you, you I know. know you remember this but I'm going to tell the story again for the sake of the new listeners uh, last year when we were talking about collards and I was like, man, I got this collard here that looks crazy. It doesn't look anything like it. And we've been eating leaves off of it all winter. And it turned out that it was a broccoli plant. Um, Dude. It was. And we, and Kelly was like, I don't like these collards. You know, Miss Gardner was like, this, these just don't cut it. And I'm like, I don't know what the deal of these is. And then when I finally learned about it, I told her and she's like, well, she's like, I don't grow the food. So you're the idiot, not me. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, you ate it. So check it. this out. And, and we're a match made in garden heaven because I bought my transplants this year. And this is the very early part of me planting. So I still had my act together back then. And so I planted out what I thought was a row, like so maybe five plants of collards, another row of collards, and then I tucked in like three broccoli plants. And then I started to see like these plants look different. And then I started to see one bolt. And I'm like, you know, a collard green plant isn't going to bolt in the first year. Right. And so I'm like, well, maybe this is broccoli. And the trouble is, by the time it bolts, like when when things go to flower, they all kind of look the same. Yeah. You know, so I still don't know. Right. And so now I'm just like either I have five collard green plants or no collard green plants. Who knows? Right. So. um, So, yeah, I'm probably still trying to figure this out by the time we get to this recording. But I do believe that if I would have been harvesting those leaves and said the heck with it from the very beginning i think i could have enjoyed them the same way right you know um so there is that you obviously want if you're trying to produce a head when we talk about some of these things you need to leave enough for it to do that job yeah you know but so my snow peas this year so i did a couple different kinds of peas and i may have gotten a little (laughs) confused about where i put what um so when the snow peas kind of started, which I had a bad pea year for some reason. It's my first year not really doing a good job with them. They, um, my snow peas got a little big and I was like, well, you know what? Let's try and eat them like a, like a snap pea. Mm-hmm. There's a big mm-hmm. difference. There's a yeah, very big yeah. difference. I didn't think there would be. I just figured it'd all be the same. And um, my son was out there and we were picking them and I was, he was like, let me get a pea, daddy. Let me get a pea. So I gave him when he was like, ew, what, what's wrong with this? And I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, oh, OK. There was a big difference. So it doesn't work with everything, you know, and that's where. The, yeah, the, the starch in those were, have. Yeah, they've. I was I just mean, going to say the start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you're going to say it better no, than no, I no. am. No, no, I'm sure I wasn't. Go ahead. I was just going to say the starch in them would get like thick. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know a term for it, but it would be like it just it wasn't palatable. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's past the point where those things have the sugars have kind of, uh, you know, at their prime. Right. Um, There's an actual official description for that, but neither of us are hitting it. So um, I'm sure someone else gets it. Right. Um, But I think that that's that's the balance of like trying to time your harvest appropriately and appropriately most is pretty common across gardeners. But in some cases, you know, some people like. You know, I have have historically all my live long days waited until my collards, basically the, the leaves have finished growing. I never harvest them young. Right. And that was a part of my goal this year, but I'm still not sure what I have. So there's that. But I never harvest them young. So I actually don't know what these plants taste like when they're the size of your hand. I'm waiting until they get to the size of your head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I, it's still very enjoyable. Maybe I'll enjoy them more if I harvest them younger. We'll see. Um, But I think that you figure that out for yourself as a gardener. There's some general, I think, guidelines for a lot of these Um, things like, you know, I don't want a hard eggplant, you know, like that's other than saving seeds. 
that's not going to be enjoyable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really not good. And I mean, honestly, eggplants from the grocery store are nowhere near as good as they are if you grow them. I will say that um, they they just usually are overripe or they've sat too long. Or something I don't know what the story is with them. But zucchini was there, another one. Oh, go ahead. Eggplant is one of those examples, and zucchini too of like the vegetable taste old. Yeah. And that's that's the only way I could t- describe it. So right. we harvest our zucchini at two different times. If we're going to slice it and eat it, we harvest it young. If we're going to shred it and use it to bake with, we harvest mm-hmm. it when it's bigger. So mm-hmm. we'll do that as well. And that's another one. But see, the thing is, is and we, we did a You Should Grow on um, squash, squash. And on that episode, I made the bold announcement that summer squash and zucchini basically were the same thing. But when you harvest it, it's not. So I would never harvest an old squash and eat it. You know what I mean? I keep on. We keep every time we talk about this. Summer squash is the thing. That's the umbrella. Zucchini sits under that umbrella. Yellow squash sits under that umbrella. Right. Uh, I had someone recently say that they were going to grow zucchini and I said, well, oh, how do you feel about cucumbers? And they're like, it's the same thing, right? I'm like, no, no, it absolutely is not the same thing. Zucchini and cucumbers? Zucchini, I mean, maybe they're both generally green. Maybe that's where they were coming from. I don't know, but. Yeah, I've never heard that. I can't say that. Because, I mean, they grow completely different. Are they the same family? Do you know off the top of your head? No, I don't know off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head either, but that's okay. I don't proclaim to know everything, just some things. Not about zucchini and... I know, I know everything about zucchini. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, because after the first couple that come off, my plants die. So there's that. <laughs> I know that much uh, of it. <laughs> herbs are an example of like, you know... And, and I think generally speaking, when something is bolting or going to flower, we should prepare ourselves for it to taste different. I was just looking at my recipe of the day and thinking basil and how I always get basil wrong in my garden. But that's a good example of it's going to taste different when it starts to flower. You know what's one is cilantro. So mm-hmm. you harvest the cilantro for the leaf for the cilantro or the seed for coriander. Yep. So that's something that was new to me and it still boggles my mind. But if you wanted to save for an actual spice, you could harvest a coriander, you know. Dill is an example, you know, so people actually use dill seeds. Yeah, dill seeds, yeah. You know, as a part of cooking. Yeah, I didn't think about that either. Look at, damn, Mm -hmm. we're coming up with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, dill seeds for sure. Like, I never harvest it for the seed unless I want to save the seed. And I mean, I actually have a really hard time growing dill as well. That's, but that's a different story. I was going to say three herbs that I struggle with dill, cilantro, and basil. And I struggle with them for different reasons. Um, and they all are important to the other things I'm doing, you know, basically the after the harvest. Yeah. And I honestly end up buying, you know, store bought stuff. You know, I'll end up buying, um, cause they normally still have them like in August or something transplants from the store for basil, as an example, uh, buy the deal from the grocery store, the produce section when I'm making cucumbers, if I want to use fresh deal, otherwise I'll use dry deal and cilantro, man. I mean, it's bolt city. Just keep me, keep me on, keep me on your prayer list when it comes to that. Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, I shouldn't even say I'm growing cilantro anymore. I should just say I'm growing coriander and then we'll, we'll be good. <laughs> Um, you know, but then, you you know, when you go into herbs, there's a lot of different ways for herbs to, you know, you can do the leaves, some of them are the stems and stuff like that. So there's different times. Um, as far as basil goes to me, it seems like pretty straightforward for harvesting it. It's just the leaves. It, can you think of anything? Like, I don't know anybody I mean, that's like, I'm waiting for it to bolt. So I get that little bit of a bitter taste. Like, I don't know anybody. No, like that. no, it's. I mean, obviously, you could use it fresh, meaning like, you know, or you could wait until wait and then dry it. So there's that. I mean, I enjoy both of them. Um, But I ever for three years now, three years, I've been wanting to grow a bunch of basil and I've not quite gotten there this year included. But it's okay. I'm still working at it. 
Yeah, I actually don't have... The only problem I have with basil is it bolts, so I just keep trimming it and trimming it and trimming it and mm-hmm, trimming it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a remedy for it. Um, and it, that that's one of the sets of problems that I have. Another is I seem to orphan basil based on when I've started and when I'm planting things out because it's pretty sensitive to the cold earlier in the it season. Is, yeah. um, and I my attention is on other things. And so then it's like, oh, wow, you didn't quite make it. Wait, was that snow on top of you? You yeah. know, like, um, and my intention is what I should be really planning for going forward. Planning for, as I think about the things I want to do with the harvest of basil, is succession sowing. If I commit to nothing else for succession sowing, I really should be doing that for basil. Well, you know, and one thing, if you really want to go into left field, would be like sunflowers. So harvesting mm-hmm. sunflowers for the decoration or harvesting them for the seed. You know, you can go either way with that. And then you can, you know, not only can you save the seed, but you can eat the seed. So there's that, too. You know, that's a good example of like having a plan for that, you know, especially if you have like a, excuse me, a bushing type of sunflower, then you can let it, you know, you can do some for this, some for that, this, that and the other. So it's an excellent example. I um, last year had. um planted sunflowers you know your big face kind of mammoth style sunflowers and I actually planted some as you know uh, I loosely call it a trap plant but I I planted some and said you know I'm going to give those to the birds and the squirrels and then I made preparations to cover the heads of the sunflowers for the ones that I wanted to um, harvest and I'm I think I'm just finishing my jars of sunflowers that I, that I save for the purpose of eating. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's one of those things, kind of like the peanut butter, like I won't eat it for months and then I just eat a lot of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, you can't go ham on, well, you could, you just have to grow a lot more of it, but mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's good. And if you want to take it into a dietary f- for a second, it's good to supplement different things in your garden because, you know, one thing that I've been doing lately is I've, been filming these videos and stuff and as we built out these these different series is i keep referring back to the august challenge Mm -hmm. constantly referring back to it and the lack of what nutrients were inside of my garden and sunflowers is a good is a very good kind of supplement into that i think that you would have to have a pretty big patch of sunflowers in order to make a difference but that's not the end of the world either i don't i've never heard anybody complain of having too many sunflowers yeah if you want to try to think about seasonal like you know by the time you get to walnuts which would be later in the season later in the year you know all right let's eat sunflower seeds from september october and then let's transition to walnuts as you know kind of a nutty fat you know for when you could you could figure that piece out um one of the things when it comes to the harvest time I I harvested them last year, which is the first year I grew them for the purpose of harvesting seeds. What are you t- you're sure talking about? It was o- sunflowers still? Sunflowers, okay. yeah. I'm pretty sure it was for it was in October. And by then our weather is pretty chilly and those seeds could have been harvested long before that. But now we're getting into the kind of cold and damp weather. And I lost a couple of heads because I cut them down, put them in the garage like I'll get to them and didn't realize how damp they were. And they started to get moldy. Yeah. You know, you just didn't, you know, no one wants to take that chance. Um, but if I look back to, they could have been harvested probably in August, definitely in September. So the timing of that works well. And then I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler. This is a teaser, let's call it. Um, if I would have picked those, harvested those sunflower heads and pulled the plants sooner, I could have done something different with that space. Yeah, I was just thinking that... Um I've had that issue before and it, it mm. stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> oh, the moldy sunflower. Well, just, just harvesting stuff at the wrong time, mm-hmm. letting things sit and wait and not doing something with it. And you know, that poses a whole new problem because what that ends up doing is, is it breaks down your plan in your garden. You know, it, let's say you've made a plan but you've waited to harvest something, you know, like your end of season tomatoes. Like we refer to those a lot because a lot of people will let their tomatoes sit for those last two to ripen. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. it ain't making no more flowers and we all know it's not going to, yeah. but in that time frame, we've neglected to think like, Hey, we're going to get two more tomatoes or we could get, you know, 10 heads of lettuce in that same space. 
Yeah. You know, there is. um. So there are two things. There is the I didn't have a I didn't have a plan other than knowing that I wanted to harvest the sunflower seeds, but I didn't incorporate it into kind of my garden schedule, if you will. I know this sounds uber technical, but I mean, we're talking about maximizing what you're growing. And these are methods you can use to maximize them. And so it was timing tomatoes, which I'll touch on briefly, but for the, the, um, sunflower seeds, you know, I love to make everything a project, right? I had planned on doing a video for it. (laughs) I had planned on doing a video for it. I planned on roasting some and all of that. And so I just kept on putting it off until I made, could make time to do all of that. And I, I did, I mean, I did half of that, right? You know? And so the reality is get the thing done. If I had basically said, like I can see now these sunflowers, the seeds are formed, right? Give myself two weeks to basically get the harvesting done. I would have been in a much better situation because when I harvested them, I didn't have time to complete the process of shelling them, I guess is what you'd call it, right? Like I didn't, you know, I didn't work that into my plan for like the end of the the season for me because um, I was still, you know, fussing around with tomatoes, which goes back to your next point Uh and this comes with time. This comes with if you're increasing what you're growing each year, you know, you're going to have to tweak the plan or you're going to realize the plan you had last year really doesn't work because you have 10 more vegetables that you're growing. Uh, but tomatoes are a great example. And for those that have been around since the beginning, love you. Shout out to you. Thank you. So can I tell you something? You? Oh, no, I'm not oh, okay. done. That was just my, yeah, that was my um preamble so for those that have been around from the beginning you've heard kind of the uh, what do they call it my um in, in acting my what's it i can't think of what it's called now evolution is what i'll call it when it comes to tomatoes and it's still my favorite thing to grow it absolutely still is one of the things that i use a lot of but my schedule for tomatoes has to be different it's 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 the most labor intensive thing in my garden. Can I tell you that I got two things to tell you. So first thing on that comment, is it bad Arc. that I haven't noticed the evolution of uh, no me a story arc? Yes, I can tell that there's a story arc, and we're coming into <laughs> Act Two A at this point, and I'm waiting for Two B and Act Three to unfold so I can see how. I mean, it's literally like sitting here with Season Three of The Stranger Things, Season Four, excuse me, and I'm like, what's going on? You know, where are we going with this? And the, the, is she going to go further or is she going to go backwards? Uh, yeah. I have my own theories, and I'm pretty good at, at watching television and unfolding the storyline but I'm, I'm gonna let this one play out i'm gonna be quiet what i hope this isn't is like i hope this isn't the ending of like lost which if you watch the series you know what i mean yeah yep if you didn't watch it don't bother <laughs> yeah I, i'd actually never seen that show but um the other thing too is i, I do want to tell you um you're one, one of my good bestest friends you know that right yeah but i will say that in all of the hundreds of I, it, no, thousands of hours we've talked. There have been times when I get off the phone and say she has got one hell of a project list because everything <laughs> is a project and it's always a project. And I mean, it's, it makes me like sometimes I have to take a nap just to like process oh. the projects that you have I'm like stated. You. It's it's crazy. I made a list. This is like. I- <laughs> Real quick, because we got to focus. Yeah. So I made a list. This is the early part. This is before that trip I told you about. So that was my deadline. Get my things done. Like the real everyday work done. Like to get my uh, garden planted. Get it done before the trip. Because a personal note, I wanted to get a manicure. And I'm just going to like, all right, you know, not to say I wouldn't be in the garden afterwards, but it's like, do this. And so I made a list of all the things. And this is like the mad dash. This is like you know, the, the point 1.2 miles. So I've done 25 miles. I'm in the last stretch of this race and I'm BSing around. Right. And so I made the list on like a Tuesday 
And then Wednesday morning, I got up and I was getting dressed and I looked at the list. I'm like, how is it possible that I get none of this done yesterday? <laughs> like, yeah. So then I had to go back and think about what I did yesterday. Anyway, so then I said, all right, I'm going to buckle down. And so on Wednesday, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to get it all done. And so I said that to say, um, I'm absolutely in the garden in moments and saying, you're making this a project. It doesn't have to be a project. Right? Yeah. Which is when planning goes wrong, when plan, there's overkill for planning, because that's a such and thing. That, and, that, and that happens. You know, that that does happen. And you made another comment about how this is like, you know, this sounds uber technical and this, that and the other. But I my argument for that is, isn't that part of gardening? Mm -hmm. Isn't gardening Mm -hmm. in itself? I mean, you know, a lot of people don't want to think it's technical. But Mm -hmm. once you start getting into it and you year after year gardening, you start rotating crops and you start adding things and building on and. You know, you fertilizing and composting and all these things like in the grand scheme of things, like if you sit back and you think about it, it's like it's easy to do, but it's very technical to do as well. And think about it. Go ahead. Think about it like if you uh, play a role in, in shopping for your your households groceries if you play a role in cooking you know you may have been doing this for 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years and so on right it's there's similarities there because that's a whole process right you're not buying food that you don't feel like you have a place to put it yeah right you know this idea of what you're preparing you're buying certain things because you have certain dishes in mind right you're buying some things maybe for storage like all of those things it's only kind of second nature to you because you've been doing it for so many years. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing is over time, all of this stuff just becomes second nature, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. when to harvest something like, like this year, for example, I'm growing my peanuts. When do I harvest my peanuts? I don't know. I don't know that answer, but you know what? I'm going to figure it out when it comes down to Mm -hmm. it. I'm going to figure out. I know that peanuts are very long, crop they take a long time Mm -hmm. so i will eventually get to that you know over the years of me growing sweet potatoes it's taken me a while to figure out when to harvest my sweet potatoes you know i I mean look for all the sweet potato leaf eaters out there yes i can harvest all the leaves and eat them i get that but i grow them for the roots just like some people grow turnips for the greens Mm -hmm. i grow them for the roots so if i'm going you know, it took me the first year. I nailed it. I absolutely nailed the time to do it. You know why I nailed it? Because I was going to get 40 inches of rain from a hurricane yeah. and I had to. So then the next year I was like, well, let me wait a little bit longer and see if I can get more. Didn't work. And the third year I said, let me go back and harvest about the same time as that hurricane. Mm-hmm. And I did it. Boom. So now I know after three years, I figured it out that, okay, this is the time. Like I plant them at around the same time every year. So moving forward at this time of the year, I am going to start to do it. And then you can start to form- formulate a plan for each vegetable that you grow. Yeah, I think that um, also a big consideration is your weather, right? Not you as in young Ben, but you as a listener, you as a gardener, uh, your weather, because sweet potatoes are a great example. And I think I kind of, I figured it out just kind of stumbling into it. It's one of the last things I pull out of my garden, right? Because I'm trying to get every single day, but this is the key. And I'm so interested in this, but I just really can't find a definitive answer. I want to know when the thing stops growing. Yeah. Oh, you know, so did you figure it out? I got something though. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So you got to roll your eyes at me. (laughs) Yeah. Right. I'm like, I'm so interested in it. And you're like, I figured it out. And I'm just like, Oh, you figured the thing out that I'm not interested in? Okay. So October 1, between October 1 and October 30th, how much growth in my area does that sweet potato gain? I don't know if it's much at all. It's it's the same thing as you look at your tomatoes and say, those flowers are not going to turn into tomatoes before you get a frost. Right. Right. So all of that said for me, for sweet potatoes, it's just one of the final things I'm pulling out of the garden. That's the reason why I'm doing it in October. Some people even say you can wait until, you know, that first frost hits it. Yeah, I don't um, do. I'm I mean, I'm harvesting mine way before that. And that's just that's it's worked out for me. So what mm-hmm. I was cheering about is I did my very first potato harvest last night. <gasps> very first oh, potato you harvest. You should have interrupted 
40 minutes into the episode, you're just saying this. Well, I just thought about it. So I planted nine potatoes. So excited. And I took the lazy approach. I stuck them bitches in the ground and walked away. (laughs) And um, I've noticed over the past months, I'm like, man, they're they're looking kind of rough. They're looking kind of rough. And then I went out there. I hadn't checked on them in, I mean, honestly, about a week or so. And there wasn't a plant left. And I was like, well, I guess they're done. Yeah. <laughs> so I went out there and started digging. And, you know, for the amount of effort I put into mm-hmm. it, it mm-hmm. wasn't bad. You know, I wasn't hilling them. I didn't do mm-hmm. any of that. I didn't start slips. I just, I didn't even cut the potato. I just stuck the potato in the ground. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that being said, you know, we might get a bowl of mashed potatoes out of it maybe. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because this is, again, I'm starting this process all over again so yeah. now i'm like i'm growing potatoes next year okay i'm gonna grow potatoes next year i've got that figured out i've got to figure out when is the right time to a plant and b mm-hmm. um not plant um harvest so yeah. the planting is kind of on the peep so my goal and I may do this. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Was to save some potatoes in order so I could plant because I'm supposed to plant mine in February here. I didn't mm-hmm. get my potatoes until March, so it's a, a month late planting them. But if I can get it to where I can get them in the ground right, that's another thing that like over time I've got to figure out how to do it. So the moral of the story <clears throat> and. You're going to, if you remember the last series we did, we kind of talked about preparing for the future. Mm -hmm. That's how I prepare for the future is I start now and I start trying to grow something and figuring out how to do it. Like, I mean, you can listen to this podcast all you want. You can go to the YouTube channel and watch all of our videos on Backyard Gardens TV or Be Better Garden. You can read every single blog ever. But what you're not going to figure out is the way it's going to grow in your garden at the time for you. And you can ask mm-hmm. anybody you want on any kind of Internet outlet, Instagram, Facebook, you know, what have you. You're not going to figure out until you do it. So the, the deal is don't plant something and be like, now is the time I want to figure out right now. Because you're not going to figure it out right now. Some of them are easier than others, yes. Tomatoes are easier than others. Zucchinis, if you can get away from... Uh, here, get the bleep button ready, <coughs> Leonard, for the squash vine borer. Then, you know, you're. it's easier. But some things are not. And brute crops are, are harder to, to determine when to harvest. Uh, you know, I um, you should insert, take a clip of that snort that yeah. he gave you, and you should insert that as the the, the beep, the bleep. Um, I was just thinking to myself, I had to do the math. So this is the 14th year I've been in a garden. And I was just saying, I'm so thankful that I've been growing tomatoes for that many years. Yeah. Because there is, you know, there's always something new to be introduced as far as a problem goes. But right now, I think I have my hand on the pulse of a tomato, you know, and growing a tomato, right? That leaves room so I don't have to worry as much about that. Like, I know what it's going to look like. I know the timing of things. I know when I'm going to get my first ripe tomato. I know, like, these tomatoes, if I, you know, have three more days before I pull them off the plant, if I don't do it, then, you know, it's a catastrophe. I know those things so I can move on to the next crop. And I've talked about this before, and I firmly believe it and I firmly agree with you. Um, If I didn't know before, I definitely know now, it takes years seasons to really feel like you've mastered a plant if you could say that you've done that right now that may not be every single thing i feel like year two i was like rocking and rolling with lettuce you know i was selling it on the expressways i was you know it's all good but there are a lot of other things where it's like the potato white potatoes sweet potatoes these are years in the making for me you know and i finally feel like okay maybe this is a better space now there is a big asterisk because some of these things that um that i may struggle with are things where i'm pushing the envelope things that may not really be designed to do really really well in my area and so that's going to present its own set of problems and that's a real big asterisk for all of us right you know but things that are commonly grown in my area it still takes some at bats to get that and 
for me, the way that I manage my space is I want to learn now. So when I get to a, a space or a place or a time where it's an absolute need, I've gone through that trial and error. Yeah. Hard stop, period, point blank. So I want to real quickly, just so everybody, for the record, honestly, I want to say, I want to rattle off what I'm doing new in my garden this year mm. that I need to learn about the harvesting times for them. Because not everything... Why are you shaking your head? I was typing, you want to do an episode on this. You don't want to rattle it off now. I'm going to do an episode on it. This sounds like a Patreon episode it, to me. It does. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we can go into depth on that. But what I'm going to do real quick is... Um, thanks for messing up my train of thought. Again, here we go. Mm-hmm. This is a theme. Yeah, because you're supposed to be moving on to something else. That was the whole... <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, you you mentioned your tomatoes and, you know, 14 years of growing them. You know, at this point, you're on cruise control. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going down the highway. It's chill. I mean, hell, you've even got the Tesla going. You ain't even got to touch the steering wheel. You can just Mm -hmm. keep your eyes open. That's all you got to do. Oh, shit. Nobody told me that. Yeah, you got to keep (laughs) your eyes open. That's it. But for me, like this year and, you know, each year in the past i would say four years i've really tried to expand my garden and based on the august challenge from last year Mm -hmm. i've Mm -hmm. added a lot more so i'm really trying to do corn this year peanuts white potatoes or not let's just i don't know maybe red potatoes non-sweet potatoes let's do that um i still haven't figured out my rutabagas completely Mm -hmm. and I, i mean i'm on my fourth year of brussels sprouts you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. still trying to figure out my Brussels sprout. So don't come at me with any questions about how to grow them because I can't tell you. But, you know, there's others, too, that are probably going to slip my mind. Um, pumpkins is another one. I'm trying to do pumpkins. Mm-hmm. So all of these things like I'm trying to do and I'm trying to learn at the same time as managing the rest of my garden. Yeah. So luckily, like pumpkins and watermelons, you know, they go hand in hand of the harvesting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, corn. I don't know. I've never really successfully grown corn, had never really cared about it. And then when I pulled up all my potatoes yesterday, I was like, I need to put something in the space. Yeah. Corn yeah. is something that I can do that with. So I put planted mm-hmm. corn out there mm-hmm. so all of these things like i'm constantly expanding my knowledge and growing and i'm hey i may grow my corn this year and be like you know what it, it wasn't worth my time i'm gonna move on yeah, from yeah, that yeah. Mm-hmm. i'm gonna move on i'm gonna go do something else next year like whatever it's just corn who cares you know yeah. it, it is what it is but all of these things like you're constantly trying to do and then you you throw in new varieties of vegetables which can throw a Mm -hmm. hiccup in it so it's not Mm -hmm. all the same last year i did black eyed peas you know so now i know like and you can harvest back black eyed peas green or dried either or so there's that you know what i mean so i have a whole lot to say about that but we don't have a whole lot of time we have like two seconds yeah i'm just going to say that um we I've grown tomatoes for 14 years now. And last year was the first time I had an army worm, multiple. And the first time I had, I don't know if it was to, a tomato or a tobacco, but a horn worm. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's interesting because, again, cruise control still presents itself with certain things, but it's a lot easier to manage because there are a whole lot of things you can rule out as that example. Um, I, there's something there about the things that may not be worth your while be- based on a year of growing, because some years you do very well and you feel like, all right, I got this thing sewed up next year. You know, it may not be that great. Even in your first year out, there's some successes and it's, it's hard to, to accept it, but next year it could be something different or the reverse of it. You could have a flop one season and that next season, guess what? You're rocking and rolling. That's a part of the joy of gardening for me as well. There's always an opportunity to do really well. There is. Every year brings one. There is. And every year brings a new challenge. Yeah. Okay, look, we've gone over, but we, we I cannot in good heart take the opportunity away for you to hear Miss Batavia's recipe of the day. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. 
We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners. For my work, when it's my time, like we have an all-employee meeting and it's my time to speak, I put my timer on because it's always like you have five to 10 minutes and I'm just like, I'm going to hit it and I'm always over. So put the timer on. We're going to get this done. This is a repeat of the recipe, but it's one of my absolute favorites. I had it last night and I gave the recipe to a friend last night. So this is the infamous roasted tomato and red pepper sauce um, and the Although I don't know this person, the site is salt and lavender because I love it so much. We got to shout her out or him or them. Uh, So it's tomatoes, bell peppers and garlic is the base. A dozen Roma tomatoes. I would recommend using Roma. The person I actually got this recipe from originally uses other tomatoes Two bell peppers. The recipe calls for red. I'd use red if you have them. A third cup of olive oil, half a teaspoon of the following oregano, thyme, and a general Italian seasoning. 10 fresh basil leaves. You heard my story in the episode. Sometimes I don't have basil. Five whole cloves of garlic, salt and pepper to taste. You're preheating your oven to 275. You're going to slow roast these things. So you're going to line your baking dishes. I'm going to say plural because that's how many it takes for me to pull this off. And you want to make sure that things are lined up, slightly separated. You're going to drizzle that oil on top of these vegetables. Your tomatoes are cut in half. Your peppers are um, cut and then cored, removing all of the seeds. Um, You're going to add the dried herbs the torn basil, if you have the basil, garlic can just sit anywhere within the baking dish, salt and pepper. Um, And then that's what you're drizzling, that combination and the oil onto all of these tomatoes and peppers and such. You're gonna roast it for a couple of hours. You just want it to be kind of soft and juicy. Two, two and a half hours should do it. Take all of that from the pan. I line mine with aluminum foil, by the way. Take all that from the pan, put it into a food processor, Churn that baby up. You should have put some garlic bread in the oven while you're finished roasting it because you're going to want to put these in a jar if you're going to freeze them because it's not safe for canning. And then you're going to need the garlic bread to clean the food processor because it's just that good. It's not safe for water bath canning. Um, I don't have instructions on on how long you would pressure can it. So I don't I mean, I don't know for that. There's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm sure. But, and also to be clear, are we freezing the garlic bread? I don't make my own garlic bread, so I'm pulling frozen <laughs> garlic bread out of the freezer. That Texas Toast Putting it stuff? into the oven. Oh, it's not Texas Toast. It's, it's a fancy brand that I love and I buy many rolls of. Okay. Okay. That Texas Toast uh, Texas Toast stuff has gotten many college students through a fancy dinner in their lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to say, too, that I'm growing uh, peaches and figs for the first time, too. Oh, I can't wait to hear about the peaches. Dude, the peach, the peach tree is loaded down. I planted it last fall. Oh, wow. It's loaded. Wow. Yeah. I, I Figs make sense for you. Why? You seem like the kind of guy that would grow f- figs. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'll take it. I don't, I don't know what to make of it either. Yeah, but. okay. That's good. That's okay if we can't make out what we can, what we wanted to say. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> if harvesting is is difficult to time right sometimes, but if you think outside the box, you can get multi uses out of your your harvest in different ways. So try to do that, but really work on your timing and just understand that it's, it's not, um, you're just not going to get it right the first time. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you, you miss it. Sometimes you don't. Um, and you know, the last thing I'll say to like cucumbers are a good one for me. If I miss an opportunity to harvest a cucumber and it starts to, you know, they start to get kind of weird looking, leave it Mm -hmm. on the plant and collect the seed. It's a super, another super easy one to get started collecting seeds. There's usually on my t- um, cucumber plants one that I just let go 
by accident and then just let it keep going and going. So remember that too. For all of these, there's always that option for this because you're just utilizing that plant in another way and it can help you in the long run. Give me two vegetables Go ahead. that you recommend harvesting earlier versus later. My two? Beans. You, yeah, go first. So my two are, yeah, so beans and more like snap beans, um, string beans. If you have to choose, you're trying to figure it out, go in and harvest them earlier. And the second one's going to be easy. It's going to be cucumbers as you just described, you're better off having them smaller than you are letting them go um, longer. And the them would be multiple cucumbers. I would say greens and root crops. I'm just going to go in general with root mm. crops like mm-hmm. carrots, parsnips, mm-hmm. um, turnips, and specifically those and radishes. All of those I would recommend going a little bit earlier than later. Every time I, I pose the question, And I get granular and then you come in with the win with the more global answer. And then I regret not going more broad. Damn it. Every time I set myself up for this. So look, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to support the show, become a patron, get those two extra episodes a month, have input on the shows and all that other stuff. And uh, check out Backyard Gardens TV. You can support us that way. Our Tuesday episodes go on there so you can see our shiny faces on there smiling and having a good time talking about gardening stuff and there's a bunch of other good stuff on there and um, stay safe be strong and harvest some vegetables and until then see ya we hope you enjoyed today's show please follow us on youtube at backyard gardens tv instagram at backyard gardens tv over on our website, BackyardGardensTV.com. And then we have Patreon at Backyard Gardens. And don't forget to check out our links below to help the show. Thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.